finish filming for you guys um, like some tips and things I do when I put on my makeup uh, but I did film it the wrong way and I think it's gonna look a bit bad so um, I obviously lost my mind and I'm not in the zone today and so yeah then I filmed me doing my hair and wanted to share some tips on what I do for short hair when I don't have a hair dry and how I get my lift and then realized that when I actually clipped the phone into the tripod it stopped recording so I don't have any of that footage and I don't really want to redo it I could redo it tomorrow but I also just want to keep this real so basically all I was saying was that um, with short hair I'm growing up my hair so that I have an easier style so I can deal with it on the boat and um, for this trip like I didn't have a hair dryer and you can get like 12 volt ones for boats that work with this power system but they're so weak like the, the, it would just be ridiculous so not doing that and I've been managing quite well with this um, powder I think it's called powderful styling volumizing powder I think it's Schwartz called that does the powder and it's really great you just like powder it on your roots um, my barber told me about it and I've heard a lot of other people talk about it and seen it when I used to be on sets and stuff people use this powder stuff anyway I've got this like supermarket brand one and it really works well and it gives me this like lift and then I just a lot of dry shampoo I only wash my hair like maybe once every five four five days and it seems to get more volume the more product that builds up in a day after day after day and then yeah it's in a growing out phase I've got really short sides so it's not exactly the best I'm only getting it reshaped again on the uh, like in the middle of October so it is this for now and it's actually been doing me fine and when it gets really out of hand I put on a sun hat and or I just like tame it with sunglasses on my head and I'm getting by and I think the main thing to note is I used to be very attached to my bowl cut and used to feel like it made me me that is ridiculous it doesn't and my um, there are a lot of other things about me that I think make me cool and that I like to think make me cool and that's all that counts so um, I've let go of the the edgy haircut and it's gonna be fine and I'm gonna adapt something new and what this will turn into stay tuned We're on the River Saw at the moment and yeah, I just keep popping my head because there's like so many nice properties. It's like you suddenly get on a boat and then you go, it was the same on the Thames, you go down all these rivers and you just see like the most beautiful homes. Um, the exact opposite of what you're going for by living on a boat. Um, another little cool thing that I love, that I have, or like a tip I guess, is um, my lipsticks from Glossier and um, yeah I don't know I'm filming a bit disjointed today I've been up and down doing locks and making breakfast for the guys so I don't know where I'm at and we'll see how this all comes out in the edits but yeah I did film like my um, my little makeup routine I was trying to put like little advice in there um, for the products I use and um, yeah I what the main sort of draw card or takeaway from that segment was meant to be that I just decided on um, only using one cosmetics brand. So with someone like me that's prone to looking for things, browsing down rabbit holes on the internet and or just going into like a boots and then like buying a lot of um, products I don't need sticking to one brand really helps with that because it's one site and that's what you're limited to so you don't feel the need to go crazy or buy like a large eyeshadow palette with like 50 colors that you know you're never going to use sorry I just want to see oh we're in a boat yard just boats I feel like I'm a bit sick of seeing boats seen one seen them all just kidding um so yeah the Glossier lipsticks are they um, are amazing and I don't mean this to be like a product review but in terms of practicality so at one point I was purchasing a lot of lipsticks from MAC and love them love all the colors 
but it's one thing when you're like working in an office or going to events or like normal life and you're wearing like a thick lipstick or a drying lipstick and it's for a specific moment in time and then something for every day I'm not dressing up on the daily so I'm in like shorts and a t-shirt and here I am with like this bright perfectly done red lip it doesn't make a lot of sense and these days with masks every time you're going into a store or in a public space say no more it doesn't really work anyway I have three colors of these ones and what's really great about them is that they are super super lightweight slightly drying but then I also have the um, balm.com I have the original plain you no know, sort of like flavor and then this one which is the rose one which is obviously divine like if you like rose scents and stuff super moisturizing and when you finish with your finger it's like a great little cuticle oil thing as well so I really like that um, but yeah these are super lightweight and they sheer so you can layer them on as much as you like and they kind of fade a little bit over the day but not in a bad way that you get any lines or anything so yeah I just for what my lifestyle is becoming and for someone who loves lipsticks and loves wearing a red um, I have the red one I have a neutral one and I have a darker brown one if I want to have like a 90s look or something more eveningy and that's enough they have a few other colors not too many um, but yeah I can really recommend those for like a a very natural look and for anyone else who's got I guess a more casual laid-back lifestyle and is not really dressing up for things but just wants to have like some color on their lips I'm not wearing any now by the way I just have like the balm on because yeah I don't need to today but the red has definitely been saving me when I need like a lift so really enjoying that so it's actually turned into quite a gloomy day I've just gone and put some sneakers on uh, I was just throwing my flip-flops around the boat um, and it made me think of another thing that I wanted to say like with footwear I was like I'm not gonna cave and get anything new um, I'm gonna stick with what I've got in terms of like the stuff I packed if you're following along white sneakers Tevas, Havianas, Birkenstocks um, and that is enough and I can make do but I do have moments or like I've had moments where I've been wearing a white sneaker and it's been muddy and then I'm like oh my gosh I have to get a pair of boots and then what I do is in those moments I obviously then go search for a pair of boots and I think it's just so dangerous because then I'm online and I'm looking at things and um, I start off with like oh I'll get something super outdoorsy like a blundstone which is totally not my style and I don't want to wear those but it's like my own mental game that gets me into it like if I need something it's okay to purchase and then I dive down a rabbit hole and eventually I'm looking at like a pair of leather boots from Marquette which is like not what I want to do I don't need anything new I don't need to show off my sneakers are fine I can wipe down white sneakers and I've got a pair of black ones at home like totally fine so it's like this constant battle where I want to like have less and even though my lifestyle is changing it's like the default setting is to get new stuff for a new life this is exactly the opposite it's to get by with as little as possible and exactly what I already have because I mean this year has been crazy Paul and I both lost our jobs it's like um, the point of moving on to a boat is not to accumulate things and so the hard thing is, is getting over those feelings of needing and wanting things don't go away so getting over those and uh, any old habits that are lingering need to be snuffed out quite soon. I just sort of want to close with and let's give it a theme say um, that I try to do with my makeup and stuff it's just the one of simplicity and that things that are fuss free and trying to find things that allow you to stay true to your style but that also take minimal effort so not losing anything or like feeling like you're leaving anything behind but 
finding ways just to be you more simply, if that makes sense. And one of the main things that goes along with that is obviously figuring out what you really like, what you really like without anyone telling you like it or being influenced by anyone else. Um, I spent a lot of time like writing in a diary, literally like things, fashion things and um, things for my business and trying to simplify the things I make and yeah, just honing in on the things that I like regardless of any outside influence I think is important. One thing I will say about the fashion side of things that I've noticed, um, you would have seen obviously my diaries from last week and I've mentioned before that I love Amy. I don't know how to say her surname, but I'll link maybe her Instagram below. She does some really good IGTV videos every week about styling with her team. And obviously it's linked to the brand, but um, I'm not shopping. And also I could probably only afford the stuff if I saved and it was on sale. So should I, I think it's getting quite windy here. I'm just gonna hop out, be back in a sec. As I was saying about Tibby and Amy, their creative director, I'll link the stuff below, please follow if you're looking for really authentic, real deal style advice, like it's amazing and um, yeah, you won't be disappointed with their IGTVs if you are looking for something like that. Um, yeah, so she has this ratio which she calls CMC, classic modern chill, and essentially that each outfit would be make, made up of those three elements. Dive in, watch some of the stuff, you'll get it. But basically... I like I'm wearing my check shirt today and I have my white one on board and they're the only two items that I really bought with that are modern looking so they are classic shapes but they've got um, like exaggerated sleeves or they're oversized or like the buttons are off-center and those are like modern details that make an item feel designed are we oh my gosh hold that thought I have to go do a lock <laughs> quickly uh, what I was saying about the classic modern chill thing um, oh, I lose my train of thought filming on a boat is actually so hard than when I'm just at home alone in the bungalow and left to my own devices anyway I've got I've simplified things so much I think that I've got too much classic and too much chill so I feel very generic if I'm in jeans and a t-shirt I just don't feel like myself or that my outfit says anything about my personality which is I feel the whole point of fashion is to just have your outward appearance give a little bit of insight as to who you are and when I don't feel like myself I don't feel too good I'm wearing today this check shirt that I've worn a hundred million times before and that's because I love it and the other white shirt that I've made and any clothing that I wear that's mine that I've spent a lot of time designing and refining I really enjoy wearing and that for me I think is the modern element and so when I have something like this with a pair of classic shorts I'm wearing classic linen shorts I feel great or if I wear this with Levi's jeans I feel amazing um, as I said in my previous video, I need an answer to some trousers, like my bottoms are quite generic um, and just classic like all my Levi's jeans and things. So that's something on my to-do list is to sort out my bottoms and think about maybe a skirt or two, but definitely trousers, trousers, trousers. Got to get some modern shapes in there. So then when I mix that with a classic tee or a very chill sort of jumper, I will feel amazing or that is the theory anyway so I hope you enjoyed this very disjointed and multiple times interrupted video uh, I don't know if that makes sense but yeah and I also just wanted to say that even though I've got such a small following 
I appreciate you guys so much for staying tuned every week and if you have any questions I'd like to sort of answer them um, if it's to do with boat life and stuff they may be answered on my other channel um, that me and my husband do about our travels but in terms of simplifying your wardrobe or if you have any style questions um, anything really or what it's been like to worry about all this stuff and try and refine your life if you are like me a fashion hoarder and shopaholic um, yeah I blab on about this every week but if you have any specific questions I'd be more than happy to answer them I would like my experiences to in some way be sort of inspiring or at least helpful um, to anyone that needs it so yeah um, drop me a comment below um, or wherever you find this video uh, send me a DM on Instagram or comment on Facebook either way um, I'll be reading and listening so yeah thank you so much for watching I will see you next week for a style session so my tip for getting really good skincare I don't actually worry about skincare so much but like I have this one which is a Clarence one and it is an anti-age sun wrinkle control cream for face with obviously um, sun protection and yeah I picked it up for almost nothing at TK Maxx uh, they I slowly every now and again buy something from them as I said I don't use like serums and things like I just don't feel like my skin needs it and every time I have tried them I just don't see much of a difference or get any benefit from it so yeah TK Maxx is a great thing if you're just looking like I specifically needed a moisturizer with sunscreen just went there picked one up you get some really great brands it is risky but if it works out 100%. Then I go in with obviously my Glossier Future Dew and what I love about that is it gives you that like fresh facial glow and um, I'm not really afraid of like an oily <laughs> sort of shiny look on my skin I quite like that. Um, so I pass that all over with zero technique just sort of you know slapping it on there um, I really love Glossier a lot and what I kind of decided in the theme of not shopping which is the same thing that I'm doing with my fashion that I've picked things that if they work for me with a few products then I buy everything from them I've just been repurchasing and repurchasing it's really good because I'm finishing everything that I've made the pack now with myself that that's what I'm going to stick to um, it means that I'm not buying other stuff I'm not looking anywhere else for stuff um, and I'm not racking up meaningless amounts or exorbitant amounts of makeup that I don't use and that I don't need I really love this like elastic concealer and one thing I actually learned from um, Violette um, maybe I'll put a link to some of her videos down below like she taught me a lot in terms of makeup in terms of just using your fingers just like wearing as much as is necessary not too much uh, that kind of thing um, is just to cover up where needed so I end up touching my face a lot or like leaning like this and like I don't want to feel like makeup on me I don't want makeup on my clothes in the winter that kind of thing so wearing as little foundation as possible is like really good her amazing trick which is really really true is if you keep your nose without makeup it just even if you have makeup everywhere else it makes you look more natural because this um, skin is exposed and it's the most prominent point in your face this sticker I actually purchased when I was on holiday it's a bit gross it's just like a Revlon color stay life proof thing so my problem here is to have like discoloration here and like some dark spots and it's all like really around this area I wish it wasn't because it is the area that I end up like touching the most so I'd love to not wear makeup but I tried a lot in quarantine I was like let me go without foundation let me go without it I just can't like there's no way it's like by the end of the day if you look tired or whatever then there's discoloration yeah like it just doesn't make me feel nice at all so I pop on this makeup here and again because this is prominent I just try and leave that little like shiny bit on my chin a little bit uncovered so even though I've got the coverage I'm just trying to even out I guess my skin tone um, yeah, I'd love, love to not wear makeup, but I've just, I've tried and I've got it. I think I've taken it down to the bare minimum that I can get away with. And um, yeah, this is where we're at. So that's where the foundation goes. And so yeah, all here, even I have some like um, dark spots here and I 
get a lot of like tiny pimples on my forehead a tiny pimples around here I leave them like it is what it is like I've tried lots of different products or whatever and I'm just like you know what I'm relaxed I know if I eat a piece of chocolate probably gonna have a little bit of a breakup it's okay life is life we need to move on and get on with things then I go in with this Glossier highlighter it is so nice and dewy it's a little bit sticky like my husband touched my face he's like oh what have you got on your face um but I really like it so like I said I'm not afraid of a lot of shine um I do this one on the Cupid's bow. I don't even think it lasts long, but a lot of like makeup artists do it. So I just, it's become a habit now that I just go gunk and get a little bit on there. Fave, fave, fave is the Glossier Brow Flick. So after the lipsticks, I actually went and got um, the eyebrow stuff because I have not a bad shape eyebrow. I have some weird spots going around here and I have very sparse like blank spaces in between. So this brush is like very precise and I used to use eyeshadows and stuff and wow like if you go back and look at some pictures of me on Instagram or something I have had some eyebrow moments um, <laughs> some strange things going on um, but yeah I try as much as I can I remember I was watching Eva Chen's uh, stories on Instagram once and I can't remember the makeup artist she quotes it was someone that does obviously amazing things for fashion week or something and um, she was saying that your eyebrows can be like sisters that don't have to be identical twins and literally I don't know when I heard that it was like such a sense of relief I was like oh my gosh why am I trying so hard to make these two even they're not naturally so why am I trying to like falsify my eyebrows um, and again I'm trying to use as, like the products that keep me as natural as possible if I was blessed enough to be born with thick full eyebrows that's obviously what I'm trying to go for sometimes I get a bit of a like a, a darker spot and like I can see there I've gone too much this is a sort of difficult product to use it's like hard to control um, some days it's great some days it's not I'm sure you all know with your own makeup uh, so I get it like generally there and then you get to a point where you just go stop at the boy brow I use the blonde color because um, underneath my bleach I'm a light shade of brownish blonde uh, and the other colors I think would just be too dark this one is almost finished I'm almost there they're very um, small tubes not great I wish they would make bigger ones but it's like a brow gel but it's got a little bit of coloration and then I just brush it I'm not actually sure that this does anything if I wear this on its own it definitely does not fill in the gaps so I need to use the brow flick but uh, it sort of puts everything into place and I like the feeling of doing it like imagining I had thick eyebrows and that they were getting like brushed up and looking all super modelly. This one I've just got on is Cloud Paint, also from Glossier, and it's like a really, really, really great um, blush, like a cream blush. Use it very little, as you can see I've gone a bit too hectic today. So I use this one, which is like a brownish caramelly colour, and what I like about it is it's blushy, but it's not... Um, it's colouring my skin a bit, which I quite like, so I get a little bit of a tan, put a little bit on my nose so that the colour like sort of blends and give you like a sun-kissed vibe. I've gone for too much, so I'm putting tissue on. <laughs> Take it off with a tissue. Um, yeah, so then I use a non-finger that I didn't use to put it on with and just like sort of blend it in. I then normally use, um, I've got a MAC like rouge part, which is really great but I didn't bring that with me I was um, packing my cosmetics in a rush because I actually forgot them and um, yeah I left that one behind but it's like the standard red color and you just use like a tip on your pinky and it gives you that like gray sort of like um, rosy cheek just having a sip of my tea so yeah um, what I do have is this one which is the it's the color dawn which isn't nice but it's too orangey for me um i can see like even when i video myself like the last video i did last week like my cheeks go really orange um doesn't come out great on camera 
but I really like the idea of orange. I'm just not sure if it's really something that suits me. But um, yeah, I definitely do like like a lot of blush. Like I like to look super rosy. I just feel I've got like a paler skin, so um, I like that like freckly look with like a lot of blush. And I got a great tip from somebody that did something on Man Repeller or Repeller as they're now called, and. Um, she said to wear your blush like quite high up, which I quite like because I feel like if it goes below here, it like blends into like some of the discoloration can make me look a little bit darker here. So yeah, and now I'm basically done. Mascara, I curl my eyelashes. I don't know why because I'm not sure that it actually lasts for the whole day, but again, I just like doing it. It's like one of those habits I've picked up and I keep doing it. What's really nice about the Glossier Mascara is it's barely there. So if you don't have like amazing natural lashes, you can still look like you have natural lashes, but it's not clumpy or anything like that. Um, yeah, the whole theme with being on the boat is obviously like using less, you've got to have less because there's just no space on board for anything. And that kind of like bleeds into the rest of your life. So as much as I've adopted these sort of like makeup techniques with my beauty like I've been doing my makeup like this for a really long time I'm glad I did because it's one less thing I have to try and let go of uh, the fashion thing for me is still is still a big one that I'm trying to get around as much as I've made my wardrobe minimal it's, it's hectic 